All right, here we are. Um, we're going to do the extension lesson 3.4, which is solving some compound inequalities. And this is all going to be new and maybe the longest video yet. So settle in because there's going to be a lot of new information. Um, and again, fill in the blank whenever there's this vocabulary because we have a compound inequality. It's an inequality formed by joining two inequalities with the word and or the word or. Um, when you have a solution of compound inequalities with and, it consists of numbers that are solutions of both. So one thing we want to look at here, you have like x is greater than or equal to 2, shown by this graph, and x is less than 5, shown by this graph. So we're talking about kind of this intersection of the two right here, right? Looking at this where these two graphs kind of overlap in the middle, you can see this right here is the compound um, graph inequality. And we usually use this notation um, where we put the x variable in the middle, and it's the and, okay? And it's kind of like within. Think of it as meaning within. Um, so, when you're writing it like this and you're trying to join the and inequality into one, start with the least value, right? The, we're always going to go left to right, least to greatest. Um, and so it should work out like 2 is less than or equal to x, which is less than 5. And that is shown on this graph. Graph. Okay. Um, when you're talking about the or inequalities, now we're talking about at least, um, it's, you know, numbers that are solutions of at least one. So here, right, you can kind of see when you have these two, there's like this gap in the middle. You have either or, so you can kind of think of it as a, it's, a, it's kind of like the union of two different graphs on the coordinate plane. So y is less than or equal to negative 2, or y is greater than 1, is represented right here, and the only way we can write it is by separating it with the word or. So you will see a gap, and you're thinking about, it's like putting two graphs on the same thing, but the arrows are definitely pointing in different directions. So the and inequality, it's like an overlap, it's like a graph within, and this, um, the graph will point in opposite directions. Okay, the other key idea that we're gonna be looking at in this lesson is going to be, um, the absolute value inequalities, and it is related to our, um, sorry, got some notes over here. Um, it is related to these compound inequalities, okay? So, so it's an inequality that consists or contains an absolute value expression. For example, the absolute value of x is less than 2, and the absolute value of x is greater than 2 are what I'm talking about. Um, when we see or when we learned about absolute value expressions and equations back in chapter one, um, you know, we talked about this being the absolute value of x equal to two, meaning that the distance from zero is two, is exactly two. So when we're talking about this situation, the distance between x and zero is less than two, okay? This is an example of an and inequality. So look at the comparison of this graph and what you just learned about over here or what we just you know talked about. So we can kind of see it as maybe um, you know it's it's shaded inward, okay? It's if it's less than, um, you would shade it inward because the values are going to be less than two. So they're going to go within. Okay, um, when the distance of x and 0 is greater than 2, so it's, you know, this symbol is the greater than symbol, we know that this is one of those or um, inequality, compound inequalities, and they're going to point outward, so you're going to shade outward because it's, you know, going to be moving away from each other, um, getting greater and greater and greater, okay? Um, so that's that kind of thing. So you can solve these types of inequalities by solving the compound inequality. Um, and if we look at over here, the key idea, you have th 
the equation, right? The inequality. So we have the absolute value of ax plus b, which is less than c. Um, and then we we have to make two cases. We have to make two things. Remember before it was an equal sign. Well, now that we're using the inequality symbol, when we change c to a negative, we have to reverse the symbol, okay? And when we leave c the way it is, we're doing the same sign, okay? Same thing happens um, in this case with the or. You start out, and if you change it to a negative c, it's like multiplying by negative one, so we reverse the symbol, and then we'll solve it for that. So we'll have two solutions usually for each situation. Okay, so let's look at some examples. Um, this is right out of the textbook. If we're writing each word sentence as an inequality and then graphing the inequality. So looking at the word sentence, a number x is greater than negative 8 and less than or equal to 4. So, you know, we've kind of highlighted it here in your textbook or from your textbook. Um, x is greater than negative 8 and, so this is how we know that it's going to be the shaded within, um, um, x is going to be less than or equal to 4. So we have x is greater than negative 8 and x is less than or equal to. So if we wanted to write this as together, we would start with the negative 8 right here, negative 8, um, which is less than x, which is less than or equal to 4. So that's how we could write that and combine them, right? Because we could do that with the and inequalities. Um, for B, a number Y is at most zero or at least seven. So Y is at most zero, remember the symbol would be less than or equal to, or Y is at least seven is greater than or equal to seven. And it's just separated by the word or, and to graph that, you would see it pointing outward. And I'm going to clear the screen. Okay, um, so if we're going to practice this, we have a number k is more than 3, but less than 9, um, and less than 9. So we have, you know, k being more than 3, and k is less than 9. So we can combine it as 3 is less than k, which is less than 9. And then to graph it, right, somewhere you have a 3, somewhere you have a 9, and all together you have open circles, and it is shaded between there. Okay, looking at um, the next one is an or. So you have a number n is greater than or equal to 6. n greater than or equal to 6 or, nope, it's an and. So sorry. So that or, but the word is right there, and, and no more than um, 11. So n is less than or equal to 11, okay? So we would have um, 6 less than or equal to n, which is less than or equal to 11. And on the graph, graphed between 6 and 11. And in this case, um, because of the symbols, they are both closed circles and graphed between. Okay, let's look at number three. The number W is fewer than negative 10. So W is less than negative 10, and here's the or. Or it's no less than negative six, so it could be greater. Or W is, um, greater than or equal to negative six. So on a graph, we would have those two extremes of, well, negative 10 and negative six, which are not too far apart. Um, so here we have the less than 10 
would be open circle and it would point to the left. The greater than or equal to negative six would be the closed circle and pointing to the right. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna skip number four. I'm kind of running out of room here. But let's look at number five to write an inequality to describe the graph. So because it's graphed within or between, we know that that's an and inequality. So we want to go least to greatest, right? So this symbol is telling us that negative four is less than or equal to in X or whatever we want to use. And then the open circle less than negative one. All right. And then for number six, uh, the world's longest human lifespan is 122 years. So I guess from birth to 122 years, zero to 122 years. Um, and so that would also be an and inequality, right? Uh, so, you know, X greater than zero and X would be, you know, less than or equal to 122. So zero, which is less than X, which is less than or equal to 122. And then you could graph that. And, you know, I'm just literally putting these two numbers on here. You could, I guess, get a little bit more detailed in reference to zero and 122 would not be this <laughs> close, but a closed circle here. But since we've labeled them, it does not have to be drawn to scale. Okay. So if you have any questions about this um, or need help, again, you could go back to maybe lesson 3.1 where we start first introduced the symbols. There was a table in your notes to help you maybe, you know, come up with the right symbol using the words. So that might be very helpful to you. All right. So let's solve some of these. Um, looking at um, number seven. We have two things happening here, right? We are solving an and inequality, and we have four is less than x minus five, and we have x minus five is less than seven. These are basically the two equations that we're solving, okay? So you could separate them like this. So you're kind of, um, you know, covering up one side of it at a time, like looking at this and saying, okay, here's one part of it. The four is less than X minus five. And then here's the other part of it. The X minus five is less than seven. That's one way to look at it. Okay. But I like to look and if you can handle doing the work this way, I'll show you how to do this. So we look at the middle part and it's got this expression x minus 5. We need to isolate the x by itself in the middle. So we're going to undo everything that's happening to it. So we're going to add 5 to both sides of the inequality on the left and on the right. Okay, that gets rid of this 5 here. So 4 plus 5 is 9, which is less than x, which is less than 12. And that pretty much solves it because we've isolated x alone in the middle and we now have our two inequalities where we have x is greater than 9 and x is less than 12. So we can graph, all right, and it's between um, when you do this. So you have an open circle at both because you would have you know, this one going all the way this way forever and ever, this one going this way forever and ever, but we only need the part in the middle where they overlap. All right. So I'll skip eight for right now. Let's jump ahead and do number nine. Um, and again, we're going to isolate X. So the first thing we're going to do is subtract nine on every side of the inequality and from the middle, okay? So that makes a zero pair. So 15 minus nine is, we'll get um, six is greater than a negative three X, which is greater than or equal to a negative nine. In this case, we'll be dividing by a negative three. And remember what that does to the inequality symbols. 
dividing or multiplying by a negative will change the symbol. So we end up with negative 2 would be less than, and that cancels here, x, which would be less than or equal to 3. So I could graph and start with negative 2, and somewhere over here I have a 3. Open circle at the negative 2, closed circle at the positive 3, and it's between. That's where they overlap. Okay, um, so what I want you to do is solve number 11. So you're going to be solving number 11. Go ahead and pause the video. And let's see, hopefully you were able to solve that x was greater than negative 6 or x is less than or equal to negative 7. And what that looks like graphed, even though you didn't get a chance to graph it, um, we'll have a negative 7 and a negative 6, right, because we have a negative 5 and a negative 8. And so we have um, the closed circle at the negative 7, and it's going to the left, and the open circle here going to the right. So that's what it looks like graphed, even though you really only gave me these answers here. Okay. Um, if we need to, we can do this um, in class. because this video is already going to be long enough. All right, now we're going to do these uh, absolute value inequalities. So remember, if you will, gosh, one of the lessons in chapter five where we were doing the absolute value equations and we made two cases because we know that um, what's inside can have a positive value or a negative value and still have this you know, answer, but we always have this positive value here, okay. So our two cases for number 12, I'll come down here for number 12. Um, we would say, now in this case, remember looking at, let me come up here and maybe I'm write this, um, a less than became our and, right? That was within, so the distance is less than that number. The greater than is or, and the graph goes outward, okay? It's greater than or gets bigger. Or I, I kind of like points outward that way. So looking at this, we have an or situation. All right. So we have, take the inside part, x minus 3, the two cases. And you can keep this as is, the greater than or equal to 4. Or we take the inside part, x minus 3, and then times this by negative 1, which reverses the symbol and it's negative four. So we're gonna solve these two cases now. Add three, and x is greater than or equal to seven. Or when you add three, x is less than or equal to negative one. And then graphed um, Thanks. I committed to the whole number line, didn't I? Oh, that was terrible. Why? Oh, why did I do that? Okay. All right. Oof. Too much craziness there. So we have greater than or equal to seven. So closed circle going to the right less than or equal to negative one, closed circle going to the left. So I know I've been kind of slacking off on the number lines there. All right, let's do problem number 13. This is an and situation. So for 13, the two cases would be x plus seven is less than one and x plus 7 is greater than negative 1. So we'll subtract 7 
So then x would be um, less than negative 6. And we'll subtract 7 here. x will be greater than negative 8. So we will have negative 6, oops, sorry, negative 8, which is the least amount, less than x, which is less than negative 6. And graphed, um, <laughs> more numbers on the number line for you. All right, so here we have an open circle and it goes to the left. Um, it does not go to the left. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, it's been a long day. Okay, let's try this again. I should probably re record your video, but I'm not going to. Okay. Um, I, oh, I was like, why can I not read this number? Now it's a negative eight. All right. So negative eight is an open circle here, and the negative six is an open circle here, and it's graphed between there. Okay, there we go. Much better. All right. The next thing I wanted to talk about is number 15. Let's look at number 15. This is telling us that the absolute value of 8x minus 9 is less than zero. But we know that the absolute value has to be not a negative number. So for number 15, there is no solution. And the reason is because there's nothing that we can do, right? We can't add or subtract or multiply or divide to isolate the absolute value part of the equation, right? Or the inequality. Um, this is not true. It's untrue to be a negative number. It's untrue to be, and it cannot be less than zero. Absolute value always has to be a positive value. So in this situation, when you see this, right, that it's set up like an and, any, now it can be a greater than zero. We could solve one that says greater than zero because it's always greater than zero, right? And, um, but less than zero is a no solution situation. All right, so what I would like you to do is solve number 17. Now, remember, this is what you need to remember. Look at all these things happening here, okay? Here's the inequality symbol. The first thing you're gonna do is start by subtracting one on both sides, then come back and divide by this negative two. Okay, you first have to isolate your inequality on one side of the symbol before making the two cases. All right, so go ahead and do that. Pause the video. And hopefully you were able to tell that it was an and inequality because you divided by a negative and made it a positive and reversed the symbol. Uh, to make it a less than, which was and inequality of 6 is less than x, which is less than 14. And that's that. So we are done with this video. Um, I know that was a really long one and a lot, a lot of new information. So please, 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 if you have any questions, put them in the place at the end of the video for the questions so that we can address them in class or just feel free to ask in class tomorrow and I will see you then. Take care.